Hello everyone. I am Dr. Pooja Swami, second year resident of Kim Bhubaneswar. I am here to present paper on the topic Amazing Characteristics of Pancreatic Neoplasm or Case Series. We will start with the introduction. The pancreas can be the origin of various benign and malignant tumors, which are often identified, diagnosed, and staged using CT and MRI. Pictorial essay seeks to highlight the distinct CT and MR characteristics of different pancreatic neoplasms and provide key demographic and clinical information that support accurate diagnosis. True pancreatic masses can be classified into primary or metastatic lesions. The primary lesions are more common than the metastatic lesions. The primary lesions can be solid or cystic. Solid tumors are pancreatic adenocarcinoma, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, solid pseudopapillary tumor, pancreatoblastoma, pancreatic lymphoma, and cystic lesions can be uh, serous cyst adenoma, mucinous cystic neoplasm, introductory papillary mucinous tumor of the pancreas. Over the course of one year, data was collected from the radiology department. In our institute, this data encompassed clinical profiles as well as findings from CT and MRI, including details on surgical management and histopathological results. MRI studies were conducted using 1.5 Tesla system, while CT scans were performed using 64 slice CT machine. Imaging was carried out in both the non contrast to post contrast phases with the rapid administration of the contrast agent. Now we will start with the case series. This is the case one 50 year old male with history of chronic aspect pancreatitis. Here we can see the atrophic head, head and body of pancreas. And we can see the infiltrative mark in the tail region with calcification in it. And we can see the uh, MPD which is dilated in proximally. Here we can see uh, the encasement of splenic vein is also there. And um, we can see in the liver there are hypoenanthic focal lesions are there. This is the PET CT scan. Here we can see the FTC uptake in pancreatic and liver lesions. In our institute, endoscopic ultrasound guided uh, FNSC is done, which was suggestive of carcinoma, and USD guided FNSC is done from liver lesions, which was suggestive of metastatic carcinoma as deposit. This is the case two. This 45 year old female presented with recurrent attacks of hypoglycemia. On ultrasound, we can see the hypoglycoid nodule, which is well defined. On non contrast CT, we can see solid mass in the body region. On arterial phase and portal venous phase, we can see the persistent enhancement of the lesion. The confirmation of pancreatic insulinoma is done with biochemical analysis like C peptide and histopathologic post surgery. Now, this is a case 3 27 year old female presented with big abdominal pain. On CT, we can see that solid cystic mass in the tail region. Here it is seen on non contrast. And on portal venous phase, it is showing enhancement. The diagnosis of solid pseudopapillary neoplasm is made on histopathology after distal pancreatectomy. This is a case for 50 year old female presented with pain in epigastric and peri umbilical lesion. Here we can see the cystic lesion in the tail, which is having internal septation. And on the post contrast images, we can see the C septa are enhancing. The confirmation of mucinous cystic neoplasm is done with histopathology post surgery. This is a case 5, 53 year old female. Here we can see the microcystic lesion in the tail region of the pancreas, which is showing internal separation. The diagnosis of serous cystic adenoma is made on basis of imaging and endoscopic ultrasound guided aspirate, which showed normal carcinoembryonic lesion and amylase. Now we will discuss the pancreatic neoplasm. The most common pancreatic neoplasm is ductal adenocarcinoma, which is malignant. And uh, other pancreatic neoplasm, which can be there, are like cystic and uh, endocrine neoplasm, SNR cell carcinoma. Pancreatic lesions can be solid, can be solid cystic or cystic on the basis of composition. And uh, the, if the solid lesion it is well defined, then, and it is showing intense enhancement, then it is suggestive of neuroendocrine tumor. If the solid lesion, which is ill defined and showing hypoenhancement, then it is mo in more favor of adenocarcinoma. If this lesion is solid cystic and it is showing peripheral solid and central cystic area with capsule or septa present in it, and it is showing moderate enhancement of capsule, septa, or solid version, then it is suggestive of solid pseudopapillary neoplasm. If the lesion is cystic and it is showing communication with MPD and it is non-enhancing, then it is more in favor of side branch IPMN. And if the lesion is microcystic, showing central calcific scar, and the 
septa can be enhancing or non enhancing then it is in more favor of serous cystic adenoma if the lesion is macrocystic and it is it can show enhancing septa then it is mucinous cystic adenoma if the cystic lesion diffusely showing diffusely dilated mpd with mucinous globules in it then it is suggestive of main duct ipmn the pancreatic adenocarcinoma commonly seen in elderly presenting symptoms can include jaundice weight loss and abdominal pain risk factors include chronic ulcerative pancreatitis diabetes mellitus and hereditary cancer syndrome imaging features can be hypodense to normal pancreatic parenchyma and uh, cystic degeneration can be seen and abrupt pancreatic duct cut off can be seen and the vascular invasion and distant metastasis commonly to liver can be seen here the usual management of the uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma if it is resectable then we do triple surgery if the lesion is present in the head region of the pancreas or if it is present in body and tail then we will go for distant pancreatectomy and splenectomy uh, neuroendocrine tumor the most common neuroendocrine tumor is non functional neuroendocrine tumor but in functional the insulinoma is the most common one and it will show the hypoglycemic syndrome and the biochemical diagnosis can be done on the basis of insulin and c peptide the second most common in the functional neuroendocrine tumor is the gastrinoma which will secrete gastrin and it will present with zollinger ellis syndrome which will have features of abdominal pain peptic ulcer disease or gerd here on biochemical diagnosis we can do on the basis of uh, gastrin more than 1000 and gastric ph less than 2 other less common neuroendocrine tumor can be glucagonoma somatostatinoma vipoma and carcinoma treatment can be done in this surgery and uh, denucleation is done for the insulinoma and for rest of the tumor if it is head and neck region then we will go for pancreatic jordanectomy and if it is in body and tail region then we will go for distal pancreatectomy the chemotherapy also can be given and peptide receptor radio ligand therapy using lutetium or ipsilim can be given in the dotanox positive cases like in gastrinoma antivazep like sunitinib can be given and mtor inhibitors like everolimus can be given now we will discuss cystic neoplasm of the pancreas the pseudo cyst which can be seen in the More more than fifty years of age, it doesn't show malignant potential and it may show communication with MPD and it is usually unilocular in appearance and may show calcification. The ball is usually enhancing and the aspirate will show increased myelin. The serous cystic neoplasm is usually seen in elderly more than sixty years of age. Location is common in the head. It doesn't show any conversion to malignancy and. Uh, It, it won't show communication with MPD and the appearance wise it will be microcystic more than six cystic lesions can be seen and the size of the cyst will be less than two centimeter. Central calcified scar we can see and um, the ball will be thin here and the aspirate will show uh, normal carcinoembryonic antigen and amylase. Mucinous cystic neoplasm is common in forty to sixty years of age group and it is usually seen in the tail region and it can convert to malignancy. And appearance wise, it is macrocystic well circumscribed, and it can show peripheral calcification, and the ball will be uh, thick enhancing here, and the aspirate will show increased carcinoembryonic antigen and normal amylase. IPMN tumor is usually seen in the more than sixty years of age. The location is uh, head, which is more common. Uh, it can convert to malignancy, and it shows communication with MPD, and we can see the grape grape like calcification, and uh, the ball will be thin. Of the IPM and the aspirate will show increased carcinoembryonic antigen and amylase. Solid pseudo papillary neoplasm. It is seen in the age group of 20 to 30 years and is more usual location is the tail region and uh, it can convert to malignancy. It doesn't show any communication with MPD. Appearance wise, it can be solid completely or it can be solid cystic and uh, it can show peripheral calcification and the ball will be enhancing. The treatment here will be the mainstay of treatment. Uh, for mucinous cystic neoplasm, for IPM and for solid pseudo papillary neoplasm, the surgery will be the mainstay of treatment. The surgery is indicated in serous cystic neoplasm if it is symptomatic and size more than four centimeter and ductal dilatation is there. These are my references. Thank you. Mm -hmm.